Welcome back. You're tuned into Market Fatafat, where we're taking you through all the stocks that are in focus today on the back of news flow or on the back of technicals. And on the technicals, we are now joined by Chandan Taparia, who's derivatives and technical analyst from Motilal Oswal. And from our research team, we are joined back by Ria. Hi, good afternoon to you both. Let's get uh, started yet again with all the stocks that are in use today. Well, Amara Raja, an earnings candidate, is in focus today. Let's take a look at the results first. Uh, the revenues are seeing an uptick of 9.8% on a year-on-year -year basis uh, at the 300 and, uh, at 3,251 crores. The net profit, however, saw a decline of 1.2% on a year-on-year -year basis at 235 crore rupees. The EBITDA is, uh, however, managed to tick up 1.7 percent on a year-on-year -year basis, but the margins have, uh, uh, you know, declined 106 basis points on a year-on-year -year basis. Now, the DO, uh, the BOD at the meeting held today had, uh, you know, enhanced the investment limit in the AR uh, ACT uh, from 1,000 crores to 2,000. Um, uh, I beg your pardon, uh, to uh, uh, to 2,000 crores in one or more tranches uh, through loan equity and uh, uh, other modes to set up giga factories and plants and also the company has declared an interim dividend of uh, 0.3 rupees per share that's the news flow coming in on amara raja on the back of declining profits and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, declining EBITDA margins uh, amara raja is seen uh, trading with cuts of almost uh, four percent in trade today all right, that's about Amara Raja. We're moving on. Uh, let's uh, also talk about the next counter, and that is the steel counters that are in focus because 18 Hour got you an exclusive news flow out here because we understand from our sources that anti dumping duty on the steel may rise to 12% from 7.5%. Now, the finance ministry will discuss the measures to protect the domestic industry. The government considers tightening the quality checks on imported steel, and the steel ministry has urged the finance ministry for action amid rising imports. On the back of this news flow, all these steel counters are in focus. <coughs> all right, uh, moving on from the steel counters and the, um, the news flow that's coming on the anti-dumping duty, let's move on to uh, Vedanta on the charts. Um, uh, tell us what are you seeing on the charts for uh, Vedanta? In fact, uh, it, in the last one month, it has been in a consolidation mode. Uh, tell us, Chandan, now what do you see on the charts? Yeah, so we have seen a decent recovery in Nifty Metal Index. Nifty Metal, Metal Index is trading at this consolidation breakout of last 19. We have seen good recovery in counter like JSW Steel, Nalco and Vedanta. And here we are suggesting to go long on Vedanta. The stock is all set to negate the lower top, lower bottom of last six weeks. From last almost 10 days, it has been moving in a range with multiple support at 450 zone. So we believe that 450 could act as a major support to get some recovery and a small follow beyond or uh, 72 can take it to us 500 zone. So expecting a bottom process led by short covering in the count. All right, that's Vedanta on the charts, but uh, KC uh, International uh, is the name that you picked out for us. Ria, strong set of numbers coming in on this counter. Tell us uh, what does the result look like? Yes, so KEC has reported quite a strong set of numbers in Q2 of FI25 and they've delivered robust performance across parameters. Uh, the revenue has gone up almost 14% on a year-on-year -year basis, uh, a big jump on the net profit front as well, going up uh, almost 53% over the previous year. Even the EBITDA has gone up around 43% on a year-on-year -year basis. If you look at the margins, that has also seen uh, quite a big, a big expansion of 128 basis points coming in at 6.3% in this quarter. We've also seen an impressive growth in the order intake of around 50% on a year-to-date order, uh, order intake of Rs. Uh, 13,500 crores. They've also achieved the highest ever order book plus L1 of rupees, uh, of over Rs. 42,500 crores. Uh, so good numbers coming in there. Now the management has also commented on these results saying that with the strong order book and a promising pipeline of uh, tenders going forward, they have a very clear visibility of growth in the balance quarters of this year and for next year as well. Now even after the strong set of numbers, the stock is seeing some selling pressure to date, uh, trading with uh, cuts of almost 2% but we're definitely keeping an eye out on KC on the back of this. Alright, uh, with that let's take a quick breather on the show. Uh, after we come back, we'll get you some more buzzers in trade. Welcome back, you're tuned into Market Padapat, where we are taking you through all the stocks that are in focus today. Uh, well, coming to you, Chandan, uh, Sipla is what you've picked out for us. Tell us what are you seeing on the charts for this one. Uh, Nifty Pharma has done pretty well over the last uh, three odd months. In fact, uh, uh, Sipla, however, you know, in the last one month is in a bit of a consolidation mode. Uh, is it time for Sipla to start moving now? Sipla has seen a volatile move in the last couple of days. It fell down sharply 
followed by a decent recovery and now holding well above key moving averages so i believe some sort of stability will be there led by bounce back move so one can hold the position or can build new with support of 1565 and here we are expecting a bounce to our 1680 to 1700 zone in the counter all right uh, we'll move on then now, but before that let's quickly uh, mark the markets so what is stellar recovery coming in i mean just look at nifty bank it has recovered uh, 1222 points from today's lows point in fact uh, we are trading with gains of almost 2% on nifty bank and nifty also has recovered uh, um, you know almost 268 points from the day's lows uh, in fact we are now well above the 24150 mark on the nifty as well strong recovery uh, posted by nifty and of course uh, nifty bank as well uh, you know recovery coming in all accounts in fact uh, if you look at uh, the broader markets also if you can pull up the charts for nifty mid cap and small cap uh, we'll just take a look at how the recovery is uh, panning out for those two also um uh for now i think nifty mid cap also is trading with the uh, uh they are managing to underperform the benchmark indices but nonetheless they have also managed to pose a recovery uh, you know uh, mid cap is trading with gains of a quarter of a percent small cap is also uh, you know trading with gains of uh, three tenths of a percent right now mid cap 150 points of recovery and small caps uh, is trading with recovery of uh, 68 points so broad based market recovery is what we are seeing across board right now but we'll move on to uh, the uh, stock specific news flows then uh, bata india is a counter that is in focus today and it is uh, in focus on the back of its uh, results in fact uh, this footwear manufacturer dropped uh, uh, the shares of uh, this company dropped 3% uh, uh, you know on the back of uh, weak operational performance posted by the company in the september quarter uh, q2 of fy25 the company's ebitda uh, you know uh, dropped 4% on a year on year basis to 174 uh, crores uh, uh, from 181 crores on a year on year basis so therefore the ebitda margin squeezed 140 basis points to 20.8% uh, in the september quarter of fy25 from 22.2% in the september quarter of fy24 now the company's profit however zoomed to 53% annually to 52 crores as opposed to 34 crores in the same quarter last year another company's revenue from operations also surged 2.2% annually to 837 crores in quarter 2 of fy25 as compared to 819 crores uh, in quarter 2 of fy24 so those are the results coming in for bata india on the back of uh, those results uh, bata india is trading with gains of a percent in trade right now but coming to you uh, chandan you have picked out uh, mahanagar gas for us uh, tell us uh, what are you seeing on the charts for this company so uh, here the structure is uh, clearly weak the stock has been making lower top lower bottom even we noticed that market has recovered well from the lows the stock is not getting any sense of buying interest so the weak structure could continue to take the stock at lower zone it has been making lower top lower bottom from last 7 weeks coating at the multiple months low level setup is weak even now. the daily chart is also indicating sell on bounce stance so use any small bounce to sell with hurdle at 1410 stock can go down to as 1300 zone All right, that's Manager Gas on the charts. But Ria, coming to you, NTPC, uh, ONGC, uh, all of these stocks are in focus today. Uh, tell us uh, uh, why and uh, what is the news flow here? Ankita, so uh, NTPC and ONGC are both in focus today since both of these companies have joined hands uh, to form. a jv company and this jv is going to venture into various renewable energy projects uh, now these projects include solar wind uh, and energy projects and green molecule projects as well and they are also going to explore sustainable aviation fuel green uh, methanol e mobility carbon credits and uh, green pro- uh, credit uh, credit projects as well and this jv company is also going to seek opportunities to acquire renewable energy assets now it's also going to consider participating in the upcoming offshore wind tenders in tamil nadu and gujarat now we're not seeing a big reaction on the stock on the back of this news ongc is up uh, just over half a percent and ntpc is still trading on a flat note but we're definitely keeping an eye out on both of these stocks today all right ntpc and ongc uh, both um, trading in the gains uh, trading in the green on the back of that news flow but chandan shriram finance uh, you have picked out on the charts for us um, tell us uh, again a counter which has uh, been in a consolidation mode for the last one month tell us uh, where do you see this going now So, like looking at this counter, I believe some sort of decent recovery may be there, and uh, uh, price structure indicate that up move could be seen. We have seen uh, sustained buying interest in last few days. So, as of now, with support of three thousand eighty-five, it can head to us thirty-two fifty to thirty-three hundred zone. 
All right, uh, moving on to the next uh, counter and earnings candidate, uh, JK Papers. In fact, the stock was down almost 7% today, uh, you know, as the profit fell 58% to 129 crores uh, and the expenses were up 15%. But uh, uh, let's look at the, uh, the scorecard. Uh, the revenue, however, saw an uptick of uh, 2% on a year-on-year -year basis at 1,683 crores versus 1,650 crores uh, on a year-on-year -year basis. Uh, the net profit, as I mentioned, was down 58% on a year-on-year -year basis. The EBITDA also saw a downtick of 36.6% on a year on year basis and the margins also saw um, you know a downtick of 1,068 uh, basis points uh, coming in at 17.6% versus 28.2% on a year on year basis. On the back of the poor show uh, coming in on the company's quarter two results, JK Paper is trading with cuts of 2% uh, in trade right now. But um, moving on to RVNL which is in focus today uh, on the back of an order win I believe. Ria, tell us uh, what is the news flow here. Yes, so RVNL is in focus today since the company has emerged as the L1 bidder from a South Central Railway for an EPC contract agreement for the doubling of tracks including electrification and signalling works in connection with the Parbhani uh, Parli doubling project of uh, South uh, Central Railway in the state of Maharashtra and the total project cost is over Rs 625 crores and it is expected to be executed within a period of 30 months uh, and the stock has uh, actually given up gains from early trade today trading uh, just about uh, half a percent lower right now so we're definitely keeping an eye out on RVNL on the back of this. All right, uh, RVNL in focus on the back of an order when uh, PFC is what uh, Chandan you have picked out on the charts for us. Tell us what are you seeing on the uh, charts for this counter? Yes, so the bottom out process is happening uh, after a long time. Technically it has been consolidating the range from last 22 trading session with a multiple hard and near 470 zone and now it seems that uh, uh, the formation of outside bar on the daily chart indicates some uptick could be there. Uh, even on the weekly chart, the stock is uh, now negating the uh, lower top, lower bottom and getting the bullish crossover on the mechanical indicators. So with support of 450, we can see a surge in the price towards 490 zone. All right, uh, moving on from PFC on the charts to Aisha Motors, Rhea, you have picked out Aisha Motors for us. Uh, tell us what's the news flow here? focus uh, since Royal Enfield has forayed into the electric bike segment and they have unveiled their first model under the Flying Flea brand. Now uh, Royal Enfield has yet to disclose the bike's uh, performance specifications or the prices but the interest is very high in this product due to the company's move into the electric segment and this launch is expected to strengthen uh, Royal Enfield's position uh, as it ventures into sustainable mobility as well. Now uh, Siddhartha Lal, the MD of Aisha Motors has commented on this new development saying that the electric uh, motorcycle launch is monumental in Royal and feels history and a new and this is a new chapter in the company's growth uh, story they've also said uh, that uh, doing a tesla in the electric two-wheeler market won't work and they are going for a disruption in the two-wheeler in the electric two-wheeler industry with this new launch and uh, on the back of this news the stock is uh, up almost two percent in this uh, this morning but right now it is up uh, just about one percent All right, uh, with that we have come to an end of all the stocks that we were, uh, uh, you know, uh, highlighting uh, for today's, uh, for, uh, for in today's trading session. For, uh, on that note, uh, Chandan and Rhea, thank you so much for taking the time out and joining us. Uh, we will let you go on that note. But uh, moving on to the fact that uh, with just two weeks to go for the much-awaited assembly polls in Maharashtra, political temperatures and in India's financial capital is inching higher. Times Network's Navika Kumal caught up with Deputy CM and BJP leader Devendra Farnavis for for an exclusive chat, let's go across and hear out an excerpt from this exclusive conversation. अगर आप लोकसभा के चुनाव का ठीक से एनालिसिस करें, तो आपके ध्यान में यह आएगा कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी ही सबसे बड़ी पार्टी थी। विधानसभा के हिसाब से अगर आप उसको डिसाइफर करेंगे, तो मोर देन 75 सीट्स में बीजेपी विधानसभा में आगे थी। हमारे वोटिंग परसेंटेज में भी कोई कमी नहीं आई। केवल जैसा मैंने कहा कि पॉलिटिकल अर्थमैटिक जो है वो हमारे खिलाफ गया उदाहरण के तौर पर धुले जैसी जगह में छह असेंबली एक लोकसभा में आती है उसमें से पांच असेंबली में हम लोग एक लाख नब्बे हजार वोट से आगे थे और एक ही असेंबली ने हमको एक लाख चौरानबे हजार का झटका दिया और चार हजार वोट से हम सीट हारे ऐसी आठ दस सीटें इसलिए कहीं ना कहीं हम लोग पोलिटिकल अर्थमेटिक का शिकार हुए लेकिन वो इस समय होने नहीं वाला 
इसलिए मेरा मुझे पूरा यकीन है कि इस बार फिर एक बार महाराष्ट्र की सबसे बड़ी पार्टी ये भारतीय जनता पार्टी होगी सबसे बड़ा अलायंस ये महायुति होगा हमारे दोनों पार्टनर चाहे वो शिंदे जी हो चाहे अजीत पवार जी हो इनको भी बहुत अच्छी सीटें मिलेगी और जहाँ तक मुख्यमंत्री का सवाल है हम लोगों ने यह तय किया है कि मुख्यमंत्री का फैसला इस चुनाव के बाद किया जाएगा हमारे एकनाथ नाथ शिंदे जी उनके पार्टी के राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष हैं अजीत पवार जी उनकी पार्टी के राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष हैं तो ये दोनों राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष हमारे राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष जी के साथ हमारे पार्लियामेंट्री बोर्ड के साथ बैठ फैसला करेंगे जो फैसला होगा वो मुख्यमंत्री होगा लेकिन देवेंद्र फडनवीस जी के लिए स्वयं ये कितना बड़ा कॉम्प्रोमाइज है क्योंकि आप ही के डायलॉग को रोज लोग रिपीट करते हैं आप ही ने अजीत दादा पवार के लिए कहा था चक्की पी सिंह चक्की पी सिंह आज वो आपके साथ डेप्यूटी चीफ मिनिस्टर हैं आपने कहा नवाब मलिक दाऊद के साथ रिश्तों में कहीं ना कहीं उनके खिलाफ आरोप हैं तो आप नहीं सपोर्ट करेंगे आज वही कैंडिडेट हैं और उनकी बेटी को उनकी बेटी को आप सपोर्ट करेंगे उन्हें आप सपोर्ट नहीं करेंगे ये यू नो आप आप किसकी आंखों में धूल झोंक रहे हैं आप समझते हैं कि वोटर्स को ये समझ में नहीं आएगा देखिए ढाई साल पहले हमारे साथ एनसीपी जब आई ये सारी बातों का मैंने खुलासा कर दिया है लोगों को हमारी भूमिका क्या है ये पता है इसलिए धूल झोंकने का अगर कोई सवाल ही पैदा नहीं होता जनता हमारी भूमिका को जानती है और मेरा पूरा विश्वास है कि जनता हमको वोट करेगी हमारी सरकार वापस चुन कर आएगी well now that you've heard uh, voice coming in from one party let's go on to the opposition now or on to the exclusive network that we had with aditya thakre of shiv sena the ubt's uh, worldly candidate and son of former cm uttav thakre who takes a dig at eknath shinde and the bjp uh, for its approach that he deems anti maharashtra listen into what else he had to say about who he thinks will take the cm's throne the party's priorities and much more there are multiple factors that come in if you see the reason why they ran away why mr eknath chinde ran away he ran away because he was threatened to be jailed uh, his closest aides were arrested by the ed and he came and cried in front of my father um, on the uh, lawns of the varsha bungalow on 20th of may i was in davos but the minute this happened and you know uh, he cried and all of that scene happened the drama he created there i obviously uh, got to know about it and then he suggested to my father that this was all drama that he was doing in front of the bjp only to avoid his arrest and he was really going to hop over but we had started noticing him trying to buy out our people him trying to sort of um, bribe out uh, our own mlas by trying to you know by different means and methods uh, be it in terms of attaching them to some uh, something where okay if you want to get elected i will give you more funds and this and that so it was very evident what he was doing beyond that then when he ran away on 20th of june right after uh, voting on uh, for vidhan parishad i think after that the reason was very clear because all of the 40 thieves that ran away the cowards that ran away every one of them either got something or had something to lose out who is going to be the next cm who should be the next cm if at all mba mahavikas agadi comes into power see i'll tell you um, we had clarified this twice before also frankly this is not a personal battle this is not a battle for personal ambitions this is not because i want to post or my father wants to post uh, at the age i am at you know i could have chosen to sort of step away from politics and do something at a different level uh, looking at the dirty politics that is going on around and i chose to stuck stick on because frankly i believe that somewhere we need to get into this muck and clear it out another uh... thakre basically amit thakre your cousin is contesting from the uh, making his debut from trying to make his debut from mahim constituency now what kind of a rapport or a relation do you share uh, with your uh, cousin amit thakre what do you wish for him uh, during this, these elections no I, i mean i wish well for every candidate frankly uh, again like i said this is not about our family this is about the state and um, i think i mean i truly believe that this is about which side you are on if you are with the mba you are with maharashtra and with the benefit of maharashtra with the larger interest of maharashtra if you even have a tacit support to the bjp you are anti maharashtra because the bjp in the past two years has done nothing else than loot our state show me one good work of the bjp in the state 
So are you the, indicating that the two, the two it's and a half B years, team of BJ, the, BJP, MNS? I mean, I don't know if it's B, C or whatever, but I don't speak on the MNS. Frankly, they must come out clear and say whether they support the BJP or not, because anyone supporting BJP supports the exodus of jobs from Maharashtra to Gujarat. Anyone supporting BJP supports the forceful movement of industries from Maharashtra to Gujarat. Anyone who supports BJP is anti-Maharashtra because BJP largely is anti-Maharashtra. All right, it's a wait and watch on who takes away the throne in Maharashtra elections that are likely to take place very, very soon. But with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Market for Tafat. I will take your leave. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't go anywhere because Closing Trades is coming up next. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.